If you're not being resistant and hell's not coming against you and you know you're living right with God, then you're not doing anything for God. Because if you're doing anything for God and you're living for God, hell's going to resist it. Amen? Amen? So when we praise the Lord in these ways, don't think, oh, well, you know, like the Old Testament says, you know, Lord, uh, remember when that rock fell from the temple and killed all those guys? Uh, was it because they were in sin? They thought that when bad things came, it meant you were in sin. Bad things come because there's a bad devil. Amen? Sin might open the door, but it's not an automatic given that you're attacked by the devil because you're in sin. Okay? Amen. So as you listen to this, uh, what happened to this young man, it doesn't mean he's in sin. It just means he's attacked by the devil because he's made a dedicated decision to start going on and serving God. Amen? Amen. So would you... Just share briefly what happened today when you came to church. It's hard to talk. He had missed a couple of services. The Holy Spirit had told me by revelation knowledge. I was, as a matter of fact, I was up uh, this morning. And I wrote it down 3.20 this morning. I was in prayer. 3 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, Told me I was praying for this this young man. He hadn't been here for what two weeks, and I was interceding some of my time in prayer this morning, three o'clock in the morning. I was praying for you, and uh, the Lord told me the devil was trying to sift him like wheat, and that demonic spirits had attached themselves to his family and were manifesting in his body. And uh, for a few weeks there, you were going through some weird uh, symptoms. When he walked into service today, I could literally see a serpent wrapped around his mind, around his head, around his neck, around his body, clear down to his lower stomach area. And God said, I want you to take authority and dominion over that. And I did. And if I was only ghost fell, then uh, you could feel a difference, couldn't you? You could feel the delivering power of God lift that thing off your body, off your mind. Yeah. Is that true? So God still sets captives free. Still cast out devils. Amen. Or cast off devils. Uh, as Paul did, shook the devil off. Amen. Amen. And the hand of God manifested. And this precious brother had been going through many, many, many months, maybe years of confusion and torment, unable to sleep. And God revealed that, that evil spirit to me today. And uh, it was removed off of by the grace of God. Praise God. And the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, is all that true? That's going to happen right here just a few minutes. Give the Lord a big hand. That's what Jesus is all about, folks. And we don't have church here. We don't we don't say you're in by one o'clock and out by by two thirty. We're in at one o'clock and out whenever the Holy Spirit's done ministering to the hurts and, and needs. Whenever God's done talking. Amen. Amen. But the reward of that, allowing God to be God, allowing the Holy Spirit to have his will, and not coming with an agenda, but coming to serve him on his day, his way, his signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. Amen? Amen. And it's still happening today. God is so awesome. And I just wanted to share that with the, with the entire world, with the internet, and the same spirit that set our dear precious brother Thomas free, that set you free right where you your faith out there, and that's what we're talking about, is how to build your faith and how to protect your faith. Amen? Amen. Well, in the last couple of weeks, we looked primarily at a few scriptures, Romans chapter 10, 17, it says this, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing from or by the word of God. What happens when you, when you mix what you hear? We looked at that in the last couple of weeks. When we live a life with mixing what we listen to, then we're receiving mixed messages. And mixed messages counsel out the miracle-working, faith-producing power of the Word of God. Say it with me. Mixed messages, mixed messages. Cancel, out cancel out the faith-building Word of God. The faith-building Word of God. Amen. 
And that's primarily, child of God, where most children of God live. They go to church, they'll hear a sermon, they might even read the Bible sporadically through the week. But all the rest of the time, they're watching television, they're watching news, they're talking to relatives, they're talking to friends that are espousing and sharing and repeating the most ungodly counsel you can imagine. And they're allowing that to get into their ears and allowing that to creep down into their hearts. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And the Word of God's kingdom principle is whatever you say believing, you're going to have. Whatever you say believing, you're going to have to live. Whatever you say believing is going to grow and increase in amount and intensity and strength in your life. Amen? Amen. Now, I'll tell you a lot of things right there. Stop creating an atmosphere. Write this down. Number one, protect the atmosphere of faith. Protect the atmosphere of faith. You're, not, you're just not going to build strong faith watching TV eight, eight hours a day. You're not going to build strong faith reading a newspaper eight hours a day. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you right now what happens was you, you charge and impregnate your thinking, your emotions, and the atmosphere of your home with fear and uncertainty the more of the world's opinion you study and listen to. Let me say that again. The more you watch the news, the more you read the newspaper, because, folks, none of that's Christ-centered. Amen? None of it's Christ-centered. So the more you let the world system preach to you through the news, through television, through the newspaper, through ungodly magazines, what it's going to do, do is produce the fruit of the world. Fear, dread, uncertainty, instability, anxiety, torment. And that's going to cancel out all the faith that God, by the Holy Spirit and by the Word, is trying to get into you in a short visit to church on Sunday and a few short snacks in the Word during the week. You've got to protect the atmosphere of faith. How do I do that, Pastor? I start saying, get out consciously to everything that produces doubt, unbelief, and fear in my life. Remember, we looked at the, at the, at the story in Matthew chapter 9 where Jesus was going to the... the leader's house to raise his daughter from the dead. Amen? And, and, the, and the, the leader came and said, my, my daughter, even at this hour, when I'm talking to you, Lord, she's already dead. Yet, I know that if you come, if I can get Jesus to visit my house, he's a resurrection God. And we also looked at last week that he, because he's the God of the resurrection, there's nothing that God has spoken to you. There's no dream he's placed in your heart. There's no, there's no uh, ministry that he's birthed inside your soul that Satan has killed that he can't raise back to life. How many of you got goals and dreams that you thought was completely destroyed by the words of God? God's the God of the resurrection. Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. There's no such thing Write this down underneath number one. There's no such thing as too late or it's over with God. There's no such thing as it being too late or over with God. As long as you're fogging up the mirror, as long as you have a pulse rate, and as long as you've got a spark of desire to get close to God. Just a spark. You can be so screwed up you can't think straight, but inside you there's a spark inside your heart, motivating you, and even in a voice of desperation, I want to try God one more time. I want to cry out one more time. I want to see if I can touch God just one more time. If there's just a spark of desire, God can raise it from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, there's never a hopeless situation with Jesus. There's never a hopeless situation with Jesus. There's never a hopeless person with Jesus. 
was never a hopeless person, Jesus. All things are possible if you believe. All things are possible. Amen. That's good news. Amen. Because I'll tell you something, folks. If you're if you're if you're in the same skin I'm in, and you walk in the same kind of shoes I do, every day the devil's going to tell you it's too late. You've screwed up too much. It's over. Too much time's passed. It's not going to happen for you anymore. That's a lie from hell. As long as you got a heart with a spark of desire to go on with God, God will raise you, dust you off, put you back on solid ground, and fulfill the purpose that he formed you for. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say it with me. He'll fulfill, He'll fulfill the, purpose the purpose that he formed me he formed for. Me for. What he started in my mother's womb, he will fulfill. Amen. Hallelujah. God, make you smile like a cow in a new gate. Praise God. Amen. It's never over. But you've got to get faith in your heart. You've got to believe what the Holy Spirit is speaking deep down inside your wounded soul. I can fix you. I can pick you up. I can strengthen you. I can take and put joy back in your empty heart that's been wounded and drained of joy by the hands of man. I can replace anything that hell has taken, and I can bring it back seven times better Amen. and seven times more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you got to believe that. And faith comes by hearing. And you got to protect your heart. you got to believe that it's never too late and God's never fed up and finished with you. Amen. 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 Look at somebody say, God's never finished with me. God's never God's finished with me. He still has a purpose for me. He still has purpose. I'm still a person of destiny. I'm still a person. Of and I'm still saying, yes, Jesus, do it. I'm still saying, yes, yes Jesus, Jesus, do it. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Because if you live in the same human kind of nature skin that I live on, you are always. The devil's always trying to beat T.C. Hutchins to death with stuff that happened 30 years ago. With stuff that somebody else said, that's so minor, why are you worried about it? But he, listen, listen closely. Lying spirits, demonic spirits, spirits of deception are masters at magnifying the microscopic. Let me say that again. The divisive Condemning, deceptive demons have 6,000 years on majoring on minors and magnifying the microscopic. He will take stuff that everybody else says, Brother, God's not walking the floor over that. And he'll keep you up all night, sick to your stomach over something you might have did that really wasn't all that big a deal 20 years ago. That God's forgiven you, gone on, and keeps trying to get your attention. And, Come on, let's go. Get over that. I don't even remember it. Let's go. I've got a plan for your life. i got stuff for you to do. I'm the God of the resurrection. That is That, that pitfall is filled up with my grace. I've raised you up out of it. Now let's go, boy. Amen. And Satan's still trying to get you to look for evidence of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God. You gotta protect your heart of faith. You gotta protect the atmosphere of faith. And he'll he'll literally try to get you to open doors and invite distractions, condemnation, and guilt back into your house and back into your soul all the time. You gotta protect your atmosphere in your house, in your environment with your friends, in your environment with your family, in your environment at work. Folks, they think I'm crazy at work, but they love me. You keep thinking if you saw for God, they'll think you're nuts. Well, you know what? Listen, even, even marginal Christians, even Christians that we look at and say, I wish they'd get turned on, they look crazy to the mind and the eyes of the world. As Pastor Darlene was saying, they choose darkness and they are darkened in their understanding and they live under the curse of that darkness. And even marginal Christians look fanatically crazy to death. 
So <coughs> what's the moral to that? Stop worrying about looking crazy. They already think you're crazy. They've already assumed you're nuts because you sided with Jesus. So you might as well, might as well just go haul off and get really crazy. Because they've already ridiculed you to the heap of junk pile of psychotic irrelevance because you're nuts, because you're one of those Jesus people. Just because they saw you walk in a church one time. Then somebody comes along like me, hallelujah! And I show up at work and I cast out devils and I win people to Jesus. And I look at them and say, fire me if you don't like it. And they still love me. God will honor you as you honor him. Right. God will build your faith as you protect your faith above all else. Amen. 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 Number two, the ways of God cannot be treated casual to you. The ways of God cannot be treated casual to you. If they can come and go with your fleeting thoughts, you're not guarding the treasures that God has placed in your heart. The treasures of faith, the treasures of the word, the treasures of the ways of God. You've got to hard, hard, harshly guard your environment and your heart and your relationship with God and your faith toward Him. Harshly guard it. Now remember, we looked last week where Jesus showed up at this house and all the musicians and the professional mourners were out weeping and wailing and carrying on and earning every penny that they were hired for. And what did Jesus do with them, the mourners, and the relatives? What did he do? He looked at them, and it says in the King James, and he put them forth. Another translation says he put them out. Another translation says this, and they were kicked out. Why? Because a room full of doubters and unbelievers will squash the miracle working power of God that comes to resurrect what God's promised in your life. Jesus, God himself, didn't walk around patting her hands and say, well, I understand what level of faith you're at, and I understand you think. He said, get out! I can't do a thing with all this doubt and unbelief in here. Go! He wasn't polite with them at all. Now you listen to me, child of God. What's, what's destroyed the influence of the church in America is us worrying about what God haters think. Amen. Now you better take that to the bank. If you're going to do anything for God, and you're going to walk in anything that God has promised you, my dear sister, you've got to say, I don't care what anybody thinks above what God thinks. Amen. And I put God's word and God's promises and God's ways above all else. And I will not apologize with it. The, the, the very act of a willingness to stutter and hesitate and apologize for anything of God steals your faith. Amen. It's the seed to immediate shame of the things of God. And God won't honor anything that's ashamed of it. Amen. So whether you like it or not, if you're going to walk in the blessings of God, and keep a lifestyle blessed of God, and watch these promises of God that are sacred, holy, and eternal come to fruition in your life, you've got to settle it right now. You've got to approach it boldly. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. You cannot approach the covenant promises of God casually, complacently, indifferently, or in hesitation and think they're going to happen. Amen. So, the world thinks you're nuts. Just go whole hog, dive into faith, live the ways of God, and be a psychotic fanatic for Jesus and let God honor you. Because I'll tell you what, politically correctness has killed the church in America. Political correctness has taken our government away. Political correctness has brought us on the very threshold of the curse of Almighty God without repentance and without return and we're still worried about what the heathen thinks. Look at somebody say, if you're going to have the things of God, if you're going to have the things of God, you got to be a person of faith. And if you're going to be a person of faith, if you're going to be a person of faith, you got to get bold. You got to get bold. Stop stuttering. Stop stuttering. Stop stammering. Stop stammering. Stop hesitating. Stop hesitating. And be get just get bold. Get bold. Get with it. Get with it. No double-minded man. 
No double-minded man. Or woman. Or woman. Will receive anything from God. Will receive anything Settle from that God. right now, right here. Amen. Look at somebody else on the other side. Today, stop apologizing for your faith. Today, stop apologizing for your faith. Right here, right now, never do it again. Amen. I'm a man of God. I'm a man of God. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm not embarrassed. I'm by not it. intimidated by it. I'm not intimidated. I am proud to be called by the name of Jesus. I'm proud to be called by the name of Jesus. He has chosen me. He has chosen me. He has called me out. He's called me. He's out. anointed me. And I will walk worthy of the Lord. I'll walk worthy of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That's preparing your heart to walk in the nurturings and the admonitions and the ways of faith and the bold kingdom ways of God. Anything else will cause you to surrender, draw back, and shrink at the moment of your miracle. Amen. Did you hear me? Did you hear what the Spirit of God said? Amen. It's time to get bold. It's time to get bold. It's time to get your faith up out of your heart, up off your bookshelf, up off your coffee table, put it in some shoes, and get to work with it. As you seek first the kingdom of God, then he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'll tell, let me tell you another key right now. Too many people are spending sleepless nights praying for lost family members and completely indifferent to the rest of the family of God. Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. Stop worrying about your family members are going to hell and start seeking lost, confused, hopeless sinners. Win them to the Lord. And whatsoever you do first for God, God will do for you. Whatsoever you sow, you will reap. When you start worrying and stand up at night and travailing for somebody else's lost boy, God will make sure your boy gets saved. Amen. When you start standing up at night praying for your, your their lost mamas, God will make sure your mama gets saved. You're never going to lose out in the ways of faith. Amen. But you got to approach that with faith. Amen. Say, listen, let, 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 me, let me sidestep just a little. Well, it's not even sidestep. It's just a part of this big tapestry of getting faith and keeping strong faith. <laughs> the reason we don't sell out to the kingdom things of God and the calls of God on our life is because we think if we give too much time to that, things in my life will suffer. People in my family won't make it. People in my family won't be supplied. And you've missed the whole promise of faith. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. You cannot lose out selling out boldly to God. You can't do it. And all this double-minded, and yeah, but, yeah, but, that's exactly where you get nothing. Your family doesn't benefit, and the kingdom doesn't manifest. And you just stay saved, and none of this is working. Amen. Look at somebody say, faith is 100%. Faith is 100%. Or it's not faith at all. Or it's not faith at all. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as marginal boldness. You know, you know what that means? Amen. There's no such thing as boldness in reserve so you don't look crazy to crazy people. Let me, let me, let me put it to you this way. God asks you to do something, do it. God asks you to do something, do it quickly. God asks you to do something, do it immediately. It's not obedience and it's not of faith. It's not of faith acted on later. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Not yesterday faith. Not tomorrow faith. Now faith. God says, get up and go and minister to that person in the restaurant. Well, I, let's pray and see if I get a witness. If, if the waitress comes over and says, oh, are you a preacher? Then I'll go and I'll obey that as a confirmation. Or, or God says, go tell that gas station attendant behind the window that Jesus loves her, even though she's in adultery. Oh, well, uh, 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 let's see if I get a witness in my heart. And, well, maybe next time, if it's still if it's still a burden on my heart, then I'll do it next time my, my tank is empty. By then, she's been hit by a car and she's died and gone to hell. 
See, God can't use hesitation. It's not obedience if it's put off. It's not obedience if you're fixing to. It's not obedience if someday I will. Now faith. You're not in faith until you're living now. Right now. Right this minute. Anytime God talks. Anything God wants. And that takes boldness. Faith doesn't work in a timid heart. Faith will grow in a timid heart. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Here's, here's something a lot of people don't understand. Your brain can be going eight different directions in your heart saying, yeah, Jesus. Faith will work when your head's going crazy. What faith won't work is when your heart's saying no. Faith will work right past your mind. There's times God said, go over and touch that woman. I'll make her straight. My brain's going, are you nuts? And I'm walking right toward her. Happened in a full gospel business men's meeting in Beaumont, California. I was a guest speaker. Must have been three or 400 people there having lunch. And God showed me in a vision, just like he showed me Thomas at 3.20 this morning. And he had me write down things as the Spirit spoke in utterance to me. What time does that say right there? I wrote, I wrote it. 3.20 a.m. this morning. God had already pre-appointed if you show up, he'll set you free. And you didn't even know it. He was already he was working out the miracle before you ever knew it happened. Amen. So if I said, Well, I don't know, God, we might have visitors. When God started his deliverance before he was even aware of it, he would have lost his deliverance before he was even aware of it. So he'd have gone another six days to a year thinking God doesn't move at all when God was desperately trying to move. But there was no yes in my heart. You get the big picture now? God was moving 3 o'clock in the morning while he was completely unaware God was even moving for him. But God still had to have a vessel that would say, yes, Lord. Not today, Lord. Not maybe next Sunday if it's still on my heart. You see how that works? Amen. God's doing all his promises right now in the spirit realm where your natural eye can't see, your natural ear can't hear, your natural lips can't, can't speak of, your natural hands can't get a grip on. God's moving all the time for you and wanting to move all the time through you, but God moves through earthen vessels. And if the earthen vessels don't say, yes, Lord, and obey now, it puts somebody's life on hold sometimes for years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when did God start the miracle with the with the ruler's daughter that was dead? As soon as that ruler left the house to find Jesus, the miracle began. You think he surprised Jesus when he showed up? Jesus is God. He knew he was coming. Then the woman with the issue of blood interrupted it. Listen, number three. You cannot allow circumstances of life or spiritual interruptions to get you out of faith. You cannot allow circumstances of life. How many of you want a ministry, but, well, my job won't let me, my husband won't let me, my wife won't let me, my finances won't let me, but I'm just too timid. you got a thousand excuses why God can't do miracles in your life. He wants to use you mightily now. But you cannot allow circumstances of life and the interruptions of those circumstances affect your miracle life with Christ. If you're waiting for it to be convenient, you'll never walk in the miraculous of God. And you'll never walk in faith. So this man was walking with Jesus, God in the flesh, back to his house. Praise God, my miracle's in progress. God's doing something with me. God's walking with me. We're going home. And I know he was already, he was already, his faith was already paving the ways for the restoration of his daughter's life before Jesus ever got there. On how he said, on what he what he said, how he conducted himself, and the fact that he stayed side by side with the Lord. What are you saying? 
How are you conducting yourself? And how close are you walking with God before you see what you desperately want? Are you up and down, in and out, now and then? Come on, somebody say hallelujah, Pastor. Hallelujah. That's good teaching. Hallelujah. Say it like you're Pentecostal. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You cannot allow circumstances of life and the interruptions of those circumstances to affect your faith walk and your obedience to God. Not if you want to walk in the miraculous, not if you want the, mir the, the miracles of that Bible to start happening in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So they're walking down the road, going back to the man's house, and here comes a woman with the issue of blood who got her miracle because of the exact, listen, are you seeing a pattern here? The exact same thing. The man left his house and said, if I can get Jesus to come home with me, my daughter that I'm looking at that's dead is not going to stay that way. And he put feet to his faith, got up in his sorrow, and walked in his broken heart toward his miracle. Amen. He put feet to his faith and walked in his sorrow to seek out and make contact with his miracle. He put feet to his faith and walked through his brokenheartedness to make place for his miracle. Amen. So, well, I'm sad right now. I can't go to church. That's exactly what you need to keep walking. Amen. you got to be able to walk through the interruptions, walk through the circumstances of life, walk through the sorrow that you experience, walk through the fog of pain, and stay in step with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I meant to come to church, but it was hot. I meant to come to church, but my auntie came to town. I meant to come to church, but I couldn't sleep last night. Oh, you big faith warrior. And then you're going to accuse God sidestepping in a, in a backhanded manner that, well, I tried that faith stuff. It just didn't work for me. No, you didn't work for it. Amen. Keep it honest, child of God. You gave it a little dab and let everything in hell sidestep you, distract you, discourage you. You got completely out of focus with God. God became inconvenient, and you wonder why it didn't happen anyway. It's never going to happen anyway. A double-minded man gets nothing from God. That's in print. He promised that. He said, let you be assured, living in two worlds and playing back and forth and letting every little whim of hell move you, you'll get nothing from God. But if you walk through the pain, keep your eyes on Jesus and decide you'll never get moved to the left and to the right, he will touch the miracle points of your life. And it's never too late, and it's never too dead. Amen. Glory to God. What are you going to do with pain in your life? What's Walk faith through. do? What's faith do? And I'm not being funny, because every single child of God sitting in this church is either in a cloud of pain, or is just coming out of a storm of pain. And if you're not, there's a cloud on your horizon because that's what Satan plans for you. But you have got to learn by faith how to protect your heart, protect your environment, protect your focus, and it's going to make it hurt sometimes, but that's the only way you get through it and walk in step with the miracle your heart's crying out for. Amen. Look at somebody and say, wake up! Wake up! Get serious. Get serious. Give it all to God. Give it all to God. All this stuff. Well, I'll try it. Well, forget it. Just stay home. You're not going to get a thing from God. He's not a car salesman. You don't take him for a test drive. Amen. He doesn't have to prove anything to you. Well, I gave it a shot. Just stay home. Your mouth already cursed. Anything you act like you're going to do. Look at somebody and say, you know, that's pretty good preaching for a white guy. Pretty good, good preaching for a white guy. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, 
pastor, you're not supposed to talk like that from the pulpit. Folks, have you woke up when you came into this church? I'm pastoring in a 90% black community. And the other 10% Asian and Hispanic. Why isn't there a black man standing behind this pulpit? Because circumstances wouldn't let him obey the call. Amen. He tried it, but things got tough. I guarantee you the Spirit of the living God called at least 10 black men to an all-black community to obey the, the voice of God and to bring salvation to Victory Meadows, but they couldn't stand or they wouldn't stand. So I had to pick a white boy to keep putting it in your face. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Look at this white boy. I am your last chance by the Spirit of God. And he put this white face in this black community to be a glaring out, you know, like they say, a raisin in a, in a white cake. I'm the white raisin in a chocolate cake. You can't ignore me. And if you choose to ignore me, you choose death. Amen. That's, you're looking at God's grace for you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. He picked about the most square, antiquated, Neanderthal white guy he could just to stick me in this black community. I don't try to be hip. I don't try to be relevant. I don't try to adapt. I try to be biblical. Amen. He doesn't want me to look black, act black, talk black, relate to He just wants me to be Christian. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You cannot let circumstances or inconveniences of life stop your faith walk. Amen. You don't try faith, you dedicate a life to it. You don't try the Spirit of God, you submit your life to Him. You don't try walking in the kingdom, you surrender your life to the kingdom. And you protect, you protect that atmosphere of dedication and commitment to the Word of God and faith in the Word of God at all Costs. Write that down. Protect your faith at all costs. Protect your faith no matter what it costs you. Now, folks, make no doubt about it. None whatsoever. Some of that protection will be what? Well, that wall of protection in that aggressive decision, no, 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 you're not coming in here, will have to at times include resistance to people you love dearly. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? There's people I like immensely. There's people I truly, absolutely love that I can't spend more than five minutes of conversation around. I gotta just shut them up and or turn around and leave because it's nothing but poison and doubt and unbelief. And I mean an entire conversation. I was talking to a brother yesterday. Listen to me very closely. He is so saved. He is so loving. He is absolutely a solid man of God. He is a Christian. He's a Baptist. He goes to uh, First Baptist. Great guy. I love him. But everything out of his mouth, other than Brother TC, good to see you, is yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Ten minutes of that, brother, I got to go. See ya. You have to knock him out to get any kind of scriptural faith in his head. Look, grab salvation. Are you going to heaven? Yes, amen. How do you know? Jesus said so. And that's all he believes. That's it. That's where it all stops. Everything else is, yeah, but, and how come? And as a, as a man of God, even to another Christian brother that I'm telling you before God, he is dear, I love him. I can't be around him. I'm not talking about sinners and harlots and whores and pimps. And they're, they're stupid. They don't know no better. I'm talking sometimes you're going to have to aggressively protect your heart against some brethren. Some family members that name the name of Christ will tear you down and destroy the purpose of God in your life. You do it in love. It, boy, I, brother, I gotta go. Well, good to see you. I love you too. Bye. I, 
but but you're lying. No, it's not. I gotta go to save the faith in my heart. Or too much of that poison, I won't be able to get it out through 20 hours of prayer. Amen. I've got to go from you. And that's a lot more polite than brother, go away. And there are times you gotta do that too. Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus did. He didn't let the, the, the exalted position of relative come between him and the, and the miracle. He put the relatives out. But that's, that, that's my niece. Get out. But, the, but that's my favorite child. Get out. Relatives. Put them right out of the house. Why? To honor the Father's faith. Faith and flesh don't mix. you got to put it out. Got to put it out. Think of how most Christians come to church. Do you realize that most churches just getting through the praise and worship service is a battle of faith? Amen. Do you realize that most praise and worship services in churches are so embalmed with unbelief? It would take somebody like me two hours just to preach to get over what they say. It's a rock our way. It's a hard old trail. Poorly shot. Barely clothed, we're walking our way away from hell. Oh my God! I've been in churches as a guest minister. I look at people. I look at people on the on the platform, and tears coming up. They're bombarded with religious spirits and completely void of Bible faith. Not a drop of faith in an hour worth of songs they sang. And you bombard the congregation with religion. And then expect them to walk in victory. I won't even let I won't even let Christian songs that are lacking in faith be played around me. I won't listen to it. I'll be listening to Christian radio, and as certain songs come on, turn it on. You've got to guard your heart all the time. Because some of those sound so good, you'll be crying in five minutes. And <laughs> I hope I just make it. Five minutes before that, you're walking, singing victory in Jesus. You gotta guard your heart. You gotta guard it with a vengeance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Tony and I walked through that. Hey, brother, listen to this tape. He brought it. What was that guy's name? You won't say. But yeah, some country <laughs> Christian country guy. I listened to three songs. Oh my God, either shoot me or. To him, just bombarded with doubt and unbelief. I mean, horrible. So just because they're Christians and just because it's Christian doesn't mean you can tolerate your heart being around it. This is your standard. If you want to walk in this, and this has got to protect you, and this has got to be what you guard your heart with, not opinion. Not the closeness of a relative. I got relatives that think nothing of this is real. That it's all a fairy tale. So how much fellowship can I be around with that? None. None. Guard your atmosphere of faith. Protect your life. Protect what you allow your eyes to see. Listen to me. Protect what you allow your ears to hear. Not everybody that needs to talk should have the privilege to talk. Amen. I'm going to say that again because that's a lot more powerful than you realize. Well, brother, we need to talk. No, we don't. Hey, I need 10 minutes of your time. You do, but I don't. See you. Not everybody that thinks they need to talk should be allowed the privilege to talk to you. Because most time, what they're going to talk about is just nothing more than gossip. And then the rest of the time, what they're going to talk about is either sin or doubt and unbelief. And you don't need to hear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You've got to protect your home. Listen. And 
I'm not trying to be funny and I'm not trying to be ugly. Please, please understand Pastor's heart. How many people in this church right now looking at Pastor TC and out there on the internet, name the name of Jesus, consider yourself saved, and consider yourself a born-again servant of God? That thing's place, and what's that mean? How many of you? All of you? Amen. All of you? You've got to sell it right now, folks. Please listen to me. You've got to sell it right now. I'm a Christian. So if I say I'm a Christian, there's things Christians don't do. There's places Christians don't go. Amen. There's ways Christians don't walk. There's ways Christians don't dress. There's ways Christians don't talk. Get Christian. You're going to have to get Christian to keep Christian faith. Amen. Christ, the spirit of faith in your heart. Come out from among them and be separate. You're in the world, but not of the world. Don't let the beauty of godly women be the adorning of worldly women. The plaiting of the hair, the wearing of apparel and jewelry and makeup and all that. It doesn't say you can't wear makeup. And obviously, if it says the wearing of apparel, it doesn't mean be naked if you're a Christian woman. So it's talking about the spirit of the world in the way you dress, the way you wear makeup, the way you do your hair, and the way you do your jewelry. Don't let your beauty be Babylonian beauty. Amen. You should be adorned holy, dressed holy, Sanctified looking in your jewelry and your makeup, not like somebody on the red carpet at Hollywood. And not using them as your dress pattern. Let your beauty, what really attracts people's eyes to you, be the glory and the beauty of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you know there's people the world calls beautiful, you look at them and there's nothing but filth and horror them all over? Amen. Let your beauty, what causes men and women to look at you, go, my God, she's pretty. That of a pure Holy Spirit adorned and come over you, not the way you dress on the outside. So there's ways Christians should dress. There's ways Christians shouldn't be talking no more. So you've got to settle it in your heart. I'm a Christian. So that means I have to dedicate a life and a life style to the ways of Christ and to the ways of faith because faith won't work in a Babylonian heart. That's a double mind. Faith won't work to bring your miracles when you're playing with the world. That's a double mind of man. Faith won't work when the world's telling you God's irrelevant nowadays but you, you want to stay safe. I know people, I work around the name the name of Christ and get violently hostile with me because I do not embrace homosexual marriage. How could you say a homosexual is going to hell? Because the Bible did. Oh! And, and they were in church last Sunday, just like we are today. Naming the name of Jesus, completely oblivious that that heart will never have the faith to work miracles in the day of their sorrow. Why are you preaching like this, Pastor? Because of this. You have got to become men and women of faith. You've got to become men and women. Listen, listen, listen. You've got to become men and women of faith quickly. And cry out for God's grace to do a quick work of impartation, understanding, and revelation. Because the hour of sorrows is upon us. When everything that can be shaken is being shaken and will continue to be shaken... So that that which stands is of God. Amen. And you're going to see a lot of people that name the name of Christ shake it to the very core of their being and walk away from and deny the faith they once claimed. I am a Christian. I walk in the ways of the kingdom of God. And I choose the ways of faith. And by grace, God, help me strengthen myself in that. Amen. 
You need faith more now than you ever have. And if you want to walk blessed in the middle of a world that's being actively, daily cursed, you have got to walk through the fog of despair, the clouds of discouragement, the sounds and the yells of distraction, and stay with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, Dear God, brother, dear God, sister, stay with Jesus. Dear God, brother, stay with Jesus. Keep your faith guarding your heart of faith. And while he's walking with Jesus, here comes a woman with the issue of blood. Interrupts everything, brings it to a complete stop. Because she had said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Spent all of her money, was once wealthy, now she's penniless. Been to every doctor in Dallas, Texas. All of them gave her a death sentence. But yet faith caused her to get up one more time. And the last ounce of strength she had, she walked out of her deathbed, out of her house, out of the environment of the tomb, and her heart full of faith said, if I can just touch it, I will be made whole. So weak that it was a one-way trip. If she didn't get her hands on him, she didn't have the strength to get home alive. That's faith. Uninterrupted by personal pain. Uninterrupted by professional opinion. Uninterrupted by the voices of the multitude in the crowds. Uninterrupted by the, the majority's opinion. Uninterrupted by any kind of distraction and she got her hands on Jesus the exact way the words of faith out of her heart spoke. And she was made every good for And then Jesus turned to the man that was on the way to his miracle and everything came to a stop. He said, don't be afraid. Don't let fear come in just because there's been a delay. Only believe. You've got to keep the faith going. Even in the middle of interruptions. You gotta keep your faith going when it looks like everything's been brought to a standstill. You gotta stay in faith when it looks like everything in the city has focused together to bring a halt to your miracle. Stay in faith. Don't be afraid. Get, keep fear out. Guard that heart of faith. Only believe. And they continue. Long story short, Jesus got there, kicked out an unbelief out. He said, daughter, rise. And the baby was brought back alive. The man got exactly what he left house, the house for. The man got exactly what faith in his heart spoke out of his mouth. The man got exactly what he put his feet to follow his faith in. For faith without works is dead. The man got exactly what his strength and dedication through the fog, the pain, and the discouragement and interruptions kept him moving toward, and Jesus never failed him, forsook him, or said no to him. You won't get exactly what God destined for your life, but you have got to walk through the fog, walk through the pain, walk through the delays, protect your life, settle it in your heart. I am Christian! And I'm not living in two worlds. And I'm not playing with people that want to play games. And I'm not going to be distracted. And I'm not going to be discouraged. And I will not fear. And I'm sticking with Christ. Amen. No matter how much it hurts. No matter how many people surround me and try to slow me down. No matter how many opinions say, yeah, but. No, I'll not listen. Guard your heart. Guard your faith. Guard your life with Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
learn anything today? Amen. Give the Lord a great big hand. Hallelujah. 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 I'll tell you the truth. I wrote down six more notes last night in prayer and didn't touch one of them again. Because God is going to speak in this church exactly what God wants because God knows what's going on in your life more than I do. I'll write the notes. I'll lay on my face in prayer and meditation and intercession for you just like evidence this morning. But when it comes down to hallelujah, let's welcome Jesus, Jesus takes over and we're going to do it Jesus' way. Because Jesus knows exactly what you need, exactly when you need it. And I'm just here to be a cup and let Jesus be Jesus through me. Amen. 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 That's why we never know what's going to happen and we never know when we're going to get out. We just let Jesus touch lives. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Look at somebody talking. You have got to do the garden. You've got to do the garden. Now, the Lord just spoke to me right in mid sense. He said, don't say that. And that's why I stuttered for a second. And he spoke to me instantly in my spirit. He said, I want, I want you to back up when I just preach through you with a commitment. And I mean, with the second he said it, I started to stutter because he almost slapped my mouth. And he's serious about this. He is serious about this. I mean, it, it shot right through my bones. He said, nobody's going to have the faith or walk in these last days that are wavering in any area of their life in dedication to him. And he didn't mean, and I, as soon as he said that, I knew he wasn't talking about being without sin. He's talking about a divided heart. And just as surely as he taught us, you can't allow any distractions or interference second he spoke this to me, he said, these people, all my people, today is the day for them to draw a line in the sand and declare that they're Christians and are with my son. Amen. Nothing wavering anymore. Amen. No plain and no distractions. But I'll tell you something. And I didn't think about this, though the Spirit of God just punched me in the heart with this. They're drawing the line in the sand you like it or not. And they keep moving the line closer to your front door. They're going to force you to stand for God or compromise and give in. The world's forcing you to stand with God or die. They're shoving their agenda and their line right down your throat. And God says, it's time, today is time for my children to draw the line in the sand and stand for what they say. Decide in their heart whom they will serve this day. As for me and my house, I'll tell you right now, we will serve the Lord. So let's bow our heads for a moment. Now, just move that on. You on the internet, same thing. Spirit of God's moving, Spirit of God's talking right now. There's people out there, some of you are watching me on the internet, you, you don't even go to church. You might be backslidden. might be backslidden. You might have once gone to church. I'm, I'm looking in the spirit right now and I'm looking at a man sitting in an in a easy chair behind a coffee table and you're smoking a cigarette. You've got an ashtray. It's on, it's on your it's on your left side. You're smoking a cigarette, and you're going to watch this this video. You're going to watch this on YouTube. Somehow you're going to see it. I know it. God's talking to me. Your name's Scott, and you used to serve God. And you're sitting in your chair watching this, and God has been dealing with you for years to come home. And you know what's right? You have a good foundation in understanding of Scripture. God's telling me right now, today you need to come home. Right now you need to come home. God is calling His children, His church, to draw a line in the 
sand, to draw a line in their heart, to settle in their heart whom they will serve this day. And everyone in this church, and I'm telling you right now as pastor, because we're living in days now where they will come in church buildings and assault men behind the pulpit. You better be walking in the spirit. It's already begun a little bit, but it's going to be absolute open war against the body of Christ. But fear not, for those that know their God shall do exploits. And no weapon formed against you will prosper. But you have got to be of faith. If you're in this church today, you along with Pastor TC, and you out there all over the world in the internet, would say, I'm sick and tired of distractions and compromise and mediocrity and complacent in the church, in religion, and even in my life and my heart. And I, and I settle it today. No more lukewarmness. No more complacency. People are dying for their faith all over the world, and I'm sick and tired of mediocre relationships with God. Even in my life. And today I lift my hands in front of witnesses and say, I am Christian. I stand with Christ. I'm a son and a daughter of God. And I will not apologize. And I will not falter. And I will not waver. And by the grace of God I will stand. And I am ready to love not my life, even unto death, for the cause of Christ. Let what come Come, but Christ in me, the hope of glory, will cause me to stand. And I will not apologize. I will not surrender. And I will not run. In Jesus' name, I settle it here today. And if you agree with me, say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say it loudly. In Jesus' name. Say it so they hear you all over the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now give Amen. God praise for his grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.